Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel, Interactive Education, running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we will start a new chapter in physics, class 10th, second term portion for the board examination. And that is, that is, just a second, human eye, human eye and the colorful world. Human eye and the colorful world. An important chapter from examination point of view and from physics point of view. So this is basically a second part of the light chapter, except for the fact that in the previous chapter, we basically studied about physics in the sense that optics physics, uh, in the sense of lenses, mirrors, and some basic fundamentals of light. In this chapter, we are going to study the human eye, how it works, using the principles you learned in the last chapter. And we're also going to study some natural phenomena of light, right? We're going to start with the first lecture, and that will be on the human eye. Okay? The human eye. Now, the human eye is one of the most sensitive and most important organs of the human body. This human eye enables us to see the various things around us. It enables us to see objects, it enables us to see other organisms, plants, and even more beautiful things. This human eye is a very, very fundamental and essential organ. And we're going to study the fundamentals, the anatomy of this human eye. So if you look into the anatomy of the human eye, which I have brought up with the diagram here, it is a very, very complex structure. But in your course, we're going to only study the basics. The human eye basically is spherical. And this spherical part of the eye, the spherical uh, you know, shape of the eye cannot be seen from outside. From outside, it doesn't look spherical. You can only see this part, the front part of the eye. Uh, in a normal person, but if you look into the anatomy, it is spherical, like if you see here. Now, basically, there is an outer transparent membrane in the eye, which is called the cornea. So you see, this is the cornea. This is the outer transparent part of the eye. Okay, it is going to be the outer transparent membrane. And this basically protects the eye from damage. Okay, it is going to protect from damage. Okay, it protects the eye from damage and it also allows light to enter the eye. So finally, there's going to be the cornea. Then we have a hole in the center. Now you can see this there's, a, this, there's this gap, which is the hole. And this hole is what you call the pupil of the eye. Okay, and this pupil controls the amount of light that enters the eye. Controls amount of light. amount of light entering so basically it controls the amount of light entering the eye right when there is abundance of light then this pupil contracts that is it becomes small to allow less light to enter the eye whereas if there is less light then this pupil expands to allow more light to enter the eye now then from pupil, we come to the lens. The lens is again, uh, the lens, obviously a lens, which is present in the eye. It is a crystalline, flexible lens. It is a double convex lens. Okay, it is a double convex lens and it is crystalline. Now this, then we come to the iris. Now the iris are basically dark diaphragms, if you see. These are dark diaphragms and these dark diaphragms, they control the size of the pupil. They control the size of the pupil, right? These muscles expand and when they expand, the pupil contracts. Okay, when they expand, the pupil contracts and this happens when there is a lot of light in, uh, 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 present but if the uh, the iris contracts 
the pupil expands it enlargens and hence lot of eye is allowed to enter the eye right so hence it controls the size of the pupil and it indirectly controls the amount of light entering the eye next we come to the ciliary body or properly called the ciliary muscles okay and these control the focal length of the eye lens they control focal length of the eye lens okay they control the focal length of the eye lens to focus on nearby and far objects accordingly they control the focal length of the eye lens right then if we go to the back part of the eye there we will see that we have a you know layer a particular layer here okay which acts as a screen okay which acts as a screen to receive the light which enters the eye okay so it acts as a screen and this is called the retina it is the back part of the eye okay it is the back part of the eye which receives the refracted light rays and it is the, it acts as a screen where the light rays come and converge okay so that is called the retina on the retina where the light converges the retina is composed of photoreceptors photoreceptors which are photosensitive cells okay they it consists of photoreceptors which are photosensitive cells and there are two kinds of photoreceptors you have rods and you have cones rods detect black light black and white whereas cones detect colored light okay so rods detect black and white cones detect color right so that is the photoreceptors the retina receives the light rays which uh, converge on the retina it acts as a screen on which the image is formed and when the image is formed these photoreceptors these photos photosensitive cells they send certain nerve impulses they produce certain nerve impulses and these impulses electrical impulses go to the blind spot this is the blind spot where light cannot converge and even if it does you will not see anything right so this is the blind spot so they go and converge at the uh, you know wherever the light will come they will go and produce electrical impulses and when electrical impulses will be produced they'll go and they'll convert uh, these electrical impulses will reach the blind spot from the blind spot they will be transferred to the brain they will be transferred to the brain via the optic nerve they are going to be transferred to the brain via the optic nerve and the electrical impulses which are going to be transferred to the brain via the optic nerve are going to reach the brain and there the brain is going to interpret the real image and real image is going to be inverted we know that so how can we see things straight it is because electrical impulses produced reach the brain and the brain finally interprets the image to be upright and proper right so that is why we see an upright image of objects even though a real image is forming at the back of the eye okay it's an easy topic easy chapter so let's have a look at the mechanism by which the light travels now after examining all its parts basically your light rays are going to come they're going to enter through the cornea once they enter the cornea they are going to go through the pupil and then they reach the eye lens right they reach the eye lens now in a normal functioning eye lens i'm talking okay no defects okay just the normal functioning eye lens let me just erase this because then it will just you know create problems so now the light ray is going to enter finally when it is going to pass through the uh, convex lens what is going to happen the light rays are going to converge right because it's a convex lens so they'll converge at a particular point actually so they're going to converge at a particular point they're going to converge at a particular point after refraction and when they converge here again what is going to happen 
electrical impulses are going to be produced and these electrical impulses will be transferred okay to the brain and then the brain interprets the image okay so this is the mechanism of the working of the human eye and the parts of the human eye right so i hope that's absolutely clear to each and every one of you all right so with that we are done with the working of the human eye that will be the first lecture on the chapter human eye and the colorful world in the next chapter we're going to discuss power of accommodation and the defects